Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Dental Innovator podcast. Today is going to be a little bit different. We're going to be talking through how to have a better work-life balance. This should be useful for those of you who are dentists, dental therapists. Actually, to be honest, it could be useful for anyone, but especially healthcare professionals. So what is a work-life balance? Well, balance is important. It is the degree of time and energy and attention that is spent on your work versus your life. And how these things balance together will often dictate how happy you are as a person. Why is it important? Well, just as I've mentioned, it has a massive impact on overall happiness and a sense of well-being and a sense of fulfillment. And it is extremely important to have a viewpoint, a clear viewpoint on what you're doing and why you're doing it and how you're apportioning your time to allow for yourself to be a happier person overall. To do this, you've really got to identify your priorities. You've got to understand clearly what your goals are and what matters the most to you in your life. And for every person, this will be different. But for some time with their kids, for example, might be something that is weighted far higher and far more than work. And for others, maybe not as much. And there's many, many, many other examples, including hobbies. We're going to go over some strategies to help you have a better work-life balance. The challenges we face in healthcare, dentistry and medicine and all of these professions are very stressful. It's a marathon, not a sprint. You have to think that you're probably going to be working as a healthcare professional, and most of my listeners are dentists, for a very long time maybe the next 30 to 40 years. So you've got to consider that it is a marathon. It's not a sprint and you're going to be doing this a long time. So you've got to be doing it in a healthy, balanced way to ensure longevity. If you do not do this in a balanced way, you will likely suffer from burnout. And it is something that's very real in our profession. And I, at various points of time, have felt this myself when especially when I was working six days a week as a dentist and it can get to you and really start to affect your overall life and sustainable approach is something that I've just mentioned before just to ensure that you are thinking about the future and your future relationship with your profession and ensuring that that relationship stays positive and it stays vibrant and that the work that you're doing still allows for you to get some sense of fulfillment and happiness. Remember that our careers do have a physical toll. Dentistry in particular, back, neck problems. These are things that if we work too much in a sprint-like fashion, our body can start to get burnt out. Our body can start to feel that physical strain. And it's really important to not only manage that effectively, which we will be talking about a bit, but also to ensure that you are being light with yourself and playing a long-term approach. Setting boundaries is a very easy way to start to navigate towards a better work-life balance. And the photo there shows the four-day week versus the five-day week. Now, if you're thinking about working a four-day week, and you're currently working a five day week, or if you're working six days a week and you still want to start cutting down a day, this is mainly about just cutting down work time and increasing the amount of time that you have for other things. So is the four day work week idea a good thing? There have been recent studies about this in different professions. I think they've done it in the Netherlands recently. And I do believe that it is a good idea. I do believe that it is a sustainable model. It means that for every four days of work, you've got three days off. And that is a good approach, a good sustainable approach for your body, for your mental health. And just in general is a good way to look at things. And you may work out that you're actually very productive. This is something they've found in these studies is that people have been extremely productive over the four days because they know they've only got four days of work to go and, and it helps motivate them to make their time much more productive. You have to manage your diary. So as clinicians, it's very important to manage your diary, ensure that you're not seeing back to back to back to back patients, that you've got enough time to do the work that you want to do. Because if you don't, then your day will just be way more stressful because you will inherently have 
much more pressure because you'll have patients waiting non-stop throughout your day and it's a very hard day especially when you start to reflect on it and have some time away from it then you really start to see that hang on yeah my days are pretty damn intense and i may want to decrease the amount of strain that i'm putting on myself and the amount of strain that the place i'm working at puts on me uh, to ensure that i have a nicer experience a more pleasant experience at work weekends so do i want to work weekends if you're going to work weekends like a saturday make sure that you have a day during the week where you have that free i don't think burning the candle at both ends is a great idea for your longevity in this career like i said from a physical standpoint a mental standpoint an emotional standpoint it's not a great idea so let me know what you guys think in the comments below if you're watching on youtube or send me an email if you're listening to this on spotify but what do you think about working weekends and how do you navigate those problems work requests or working more hours getting requests to do extra shifts these types of things sometimes it's very important to just say no because you've got to have a very clear idea in mind of how you want your life to be and if you just say no sometimes it's the best thing for you to do and working smarter so this is where the four day work week kind of comes in a little bit is that you're having to work smart because you've got less time you're also in a situation where you need to start thinking about your hourly rate and how you can increase the hourly rate so that your actual earnings don't go down when you switch from five to four days or six to five days or whatever you're thinking of doing it's very important to start to work smarter and apportion your time properly to ensure maximal efficiency okay task management so prioritizing tasks optimization of your tasks and delegation of tasks prioritizing tasks is basically just working out what kind of treatments do you want to be doing what type of things are you wanting to do on a day-to-day -day basis and prioritize those things being in your diary and communicate these things to the practice that you're working at or if it's your own practice communicate that to your team optimizing is ensuring that you're optimizing your diary optimizing the amount of data, time that you spend during a day and part of optimizing is delegation you need to be able to delegate tasks that are lower skill than what your high skill things are perhaps and that take time and delegate those things out and that way you'll optimize your time you'll optimize your life and you'll also be able to delegate tasks out and ensure that your efficiency as a professional that your output from a revenue standpoint as a professional doesn't dip as a result of you trying to live a little bit of a better life a little bit of a higher quality life you've really got to schedule time for you so what i'll often do is once a month i'll go and get a massage this is something that i find is useful because otherwise my neck and back get rather strained i also think that it's very important to have physical exertion in there which we'll talk about working less is going to allow you to have more time for you and now we're not talking about time for your family time for kids time for other commitments friends etc we're actually just talking about time for you now some of these might cross over but i'm talking about time where you're just able to look after yourself a little bit and when you do that you'll find that you get better interactions with your loved ones with your friends uh, with your other commitments outside of work you get better experiences with those because you're not constantly demanding so much of yourself so often we fit life in around our work schedule and there's some absolute intense wonderful people in our profession who will and i know several of them i consider several of them my friends who will in order to get their gym sessions in they'll be getting up at five o'clock in the morning they'll be going to the gym and then they'll be going to work afterwards this is being a machine and it's a good thing ultimately to have discipline but what you're going to find is that you really are establishing a pattern where you're just trying to fit your life in and looking after yourself in around your work but you're not really dealing with the root cause of the problem which is that your work life is possibly too intense too stressful and it will ultimately wear you down and remember what i said before you're wanting to play the long game you're wanting to be in this profession for a very long time you want to have a sustainable approach so start to have your life schedule and fitting work around it so we're flipping the script completely we're not trying to just fit our life in and around work we're now starting to optimize 
use the delegation, use the prioritization. And we're starting to fit work around our life schedule. And life is not work. Do not conflate the two things. Time for your loved ones. Everyone in your life requires a certain degree of attention. This is just factual. If you have a partner, whether it's a husband, wife, or girlfriend, boyfriend, or whatever sort of relationship, you need to ensure that you're dedicating some time and attention to that relationship. You also want to dedicate some time to your friends. You also want to dedicate some time to your family. You want to make sure that you are apportioning time correctly and prioritizing who is the most important thing, what is the most important thing to me, and how am I going to ensure that that relationship, those relationships stay healthy. And if we're not aware of these things, these things can start to degrade very quickly over time. And it is extremely important to ensure that you're mindful of this. Hobbies, you've got to have something outside of dentistry. We get obsessed with dentistry. We get obsessed with our work. We get obsessed with being better at what we're doing. But you've got to have a break. You've got to give your mind a break. And what you'll find is if you go and do a hobby and you're talking and dealing with people who maybe aren't dentists or maybe they are dentists but they just decide yo we're not going to talk about dentistry we're not going to talk about teeth talk about it all week let's just separate some time off and enjoy something else whether it's five aside going to the cinema with a friend hiking running going to the gym picking up a mix, mixed martial arts or martial arts going i started learning how to shoot at a gun range don't worry no animals were hit in the process and uh, it is important to ensure that you do have some hobbies. It enriches your life and makes your life way more interesting, invigorating. And it actually makes you much more of an interesting person because you've actually got other interests going on outside of your work. And it means that when you come to work, when you come to do dentistry, when you come to do whatever you do, you will come to that thing, that profession with far more vigor. And you'll be so much more enthusiastic about what you're doing because you've allowed yourself to have some time apart. Mindfulness and meditation. What is meditation? Now, everyone's going on about meditation. Everyone's saying it's beneficial. What is it? At its most basic form, it is literally just sitting in quiet with no distractions and you just breathe. When you're focusing on your breath, there will be times where your thought stream will drift. You'll start daydreaming, thinking about this or that, and then you just gently bring yourself back to the breath. And the idea is that you give your mind and thoughts so much prominence. You allow your mind and thoughts to dominate your existence by constantly giving those things attention. When you're meditating, you're starting to give just breath attention, just simplicity, sitting. And it is very important as a detox period away from the mind processes, thought processes, all of these things. Anchor points. So I talk about having meditation anchor points. What is a meditation anchor point? A meditation anchor point is effectively that you have two periods of the day, two periods of the day where you meditate. First thing in the morning or sometime in the morning and close to last thing at night or in the evening. If you have a consistent anchor point, let's say five minutes and five minutes, you'll start to find that that calmness starts to reverberate through your day and you just gently start to become a more calm, peaceful individual because you are meditating consistently and you've got those anchor points that start to leak into your day and you find sometimes catching yourself sitting and breathing through whatever's going on during your work day. Self-awareness and mindfulness are very similar, but meditation also increases your self-awareness, increases your awareness of your thought stream, it increases your ability to separate from that thought and desire stream, which allows you to then more consciously act, more consciously become aware of how you're creating certain things in your life and start to unwind and unravel those those patterns, those habits, that even maybe thought habits that are leading to external outcomes you don't actually want. So therefore, you're really starting to optimize your awareness of yourself 
and understanding exactly how you might be propagating things that you don't actually want to engage with anymore. Mindfulness. Mindfulness is incredibly useful. Let me give you an example. I once had a patient who was getting rather irate with me in surgery. And what I did was I focused on my body. Didn't focus on my breathing. I just became aware of my body, my hands, starting to really feel where my hands were positioned. And then I started to feel the adrenaline, you know, no, I didn't feel the hormone being released, but I felt the effect of the adrenaline on me, heart rate increasing, tingling in the fingers, slight shaking because the body was responding to this external stimulus of this patient being rather aggressive. This allows you to ever so slightly detach from the situation and allows you a little bit of space to ensure that you stay calm in a situation that may well be stressful. And we have all encountered that stress on nearly a day-to-day -day basis, given the demands of our profession. Physical exercise, being consistent with physical exercise is incredibly useful. Keeps your body fresh, keeps your mind fresh, and it is a great way to maintain not just your physical health, but also your mental health as well. You've got to think about your back and neck, especially in our career. And exercise helps you to keep your back and neck strong, supple, and allows you the ability to do the work that you love long term. It's an energy release. If you've had a tough day, going and exercising, going and boxing on a punching bag or something, letting out some steam, it's a great way to release some stress from your day. And again, it'll help you to be a more optimal person to interact with, with your friends and family and such. When you do hard things, you feel good afterwards. It's as simple as that. So start to build in hard things that are good for you throughout your week, throughout your day-to-day -day experience to ensure, again, that you've got the ability to just improve your mood and keep yourself in a more positive, productive place. This is interesting. So when we're talking about work, life balance, what does it boil down to? The reason why a lot of us are working is ultimately to make sure that our bills are paid, that our family is supported, that our mortgage is sorted. This financial pressure is definitely something that we do not want to experience. So if your bills are paid and you're working in a sustainable way, great. If you're in a situation where you're not working in a sustainable way, and you're struggling to get your bills paid, maybe adjust, maybe start thinking about further training to help increase your hourly rate so that you can be in a situation where your bills can be paid more comfortably so that you're in a situation where you can work a little bit less. Establishing positive memories is something that you've got to think about. You have a situation where you're blessed to be in a healthcare profession. It's a stable job. What you want to do then is just have a good life and you need to have positive memories, positive experiences, because these are the things that we're going to remember when we are older and we may be incapable of going and having such experiences. So create those positive experiences, create those memories through those positive experiences and really endeavor to make it much more of a priority in your life to have those positive experiences, not just holidays, not just time away completely from work, but just bringing some balance into your every day, into the seven days of each week that you exist in, trying to ensure that your experience is better and that the memories that you are creating are more consistent. They're not just holiday photos. Explore new things, open new neural pathways, exploring new hobbies. It's so invigorating to do, and I encourage you all to do it. Explore new environments. Yes, we are talking about going on holiday and things here, but we're also talking about just doing different things and going to different places in your local area and just have a bit of an explore and you'll find that it's so refreshing, it's so good for you and it keeps you on the ball. It makes your performance better as a professional and you'll likely see that you're just happier because you're making these simple steps, these simple improvements to your day-to-day -day life. Go on walks in nature. Going on walks in nature is vital. 
doesn't matter where you are, you can always find somewhere relatively close to you where you can have a walk in nature. Just get out there, experience some fresh air, get out of the city and just feel more at home with walking around in nature and just having this time to yourself. Whether you're walking with a partner or whether you're walking by yourself out in nature, looking at the beautiful scenery, these things are almost meditation in and of themselves and they have such a positive effect on you. Get some sunlight on you as well. So in conclusion, I've covered quite a few things there. A summation would be start to assess your day-to-day -day life. Start to assess how many days a week you're actually working. Actually start asking yourself these questions. How many days a week am I working? Do I want to be working this much? What number of days would be ideal? Get that answer for yourself. Then get to the point where you're asking yourself, right, can I work and have my bills paid and have extra income to enjoy myself and enjoy times with my family and loved ones if I reduce my days? And if the answer to that is no, then you need to start resolving that issue. Have you got too big a house? Uh, have you got too many bills? Start to narrow these things down. Start to cut costs. So there's two ways to save money, as they say. One is to cut your costs and outgoings. And another way is to increase your earning potential. So focus first on cutting your costs. The second thing to do is start to think then about how I can increase my earning potential, whether that's going on courses and how do those courses actually relate to increasing your earning potential and ensuring that you're actually taking home more money. And another way of doing it is to maybe change jobs, go to a practice where you can do more work, that you, where you can upskill, where you can do more work, where you've got the potential to earn more money in the future. And you know that at least I'm creating these circumstances that are going to allow me to live and lead a better quality of life further down the line, whether it's a year or two or three in the future, you know that you're working towards that and you're having a very adult approach to your professional career. Look at the various aspects of your life, your work, if you own your own practice, your practice, your family, your kids, your friends. What are your priorities? And start to look at how much time you are dedicating to each of these things. Just do this exercise. It's really quick and easy. Have a look at how many hours of your life you're spending. So first thing I would do is list out your priorities. One, two, whatever, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then list out how much time you're spending towards each thing in your life. Often you'll find it heavily weighted towards work, which may not even be one, two or three. Start to become conscious of that and start to make these changes. Because I want you to all live a better quality of life. I've only worked three or four days a week as a dentist. And I see this as a really sustainable way of practicing dentistry. Recently, I've had to work a few more days because my partner's coming to maternity leave and we own our own practice. So I thought this video, this podcast would be really useful because I'm just starting to experience that again of working a little bit more and seeing that I've got less time to do other things that I enjoy doing, like this podcast, for example. So you have these moments of reflection. And this is why I talk about mindfulness and meditation being important. What you're starting to build in, the point of that is really to start to step away from this habitual life that you're leading. It's starting to step away from that, it's starting to be more conscious about how you're spending your time. I listened to a reel recently where a gentleman was on a phone call with two people. I posted it on my Instagram story little segment of it and the gentleman I think is a life coach and he was asking the two people okay imagine that I said that I was going to give you a million dollars right now would that make you happy and they both said yes you know very happy then he said okay let's say you can have that million dollars today but you know you're not going to wake up in the morning or you know that you're going to wake up in the morning in exchange for that million dollars. Would you accept the million dollars and not wake up tomorrow morning? The answer to that should be pretty damn obvious. 
Of course, I'd rather wake up in the morning than have someone gift me a million dollars and only have the next 16 or so hours to live. So what that should really start to tell you is that money isn't really that important. We, we create the situation, we create the system, and some of it is habitual thinking, programmed thinking that we have actually given to ourselves or the external world has imparted on us. But it's really important to become aware of your thoughts and your feelings and start to become aware that money is really not the priority for most people. And you'd much rather wake up in the morning. So just waking up in the morning tomorrow is worth more than a million dollars. To me, it's probably worth more than any amount of money that you could possibly offer me. So that should really put things into perspective. Start to treasure the things that deserve to be treasured. And the only way that you can start to do this is you start to become aware. You start to have more self-awareness, more conscious thought, rather than unconscious thought rather than unconscious action where you just wake up in the morning and you do the same thing over and over and over again because you did it before and that's the only real reason there's not really been any conscious thought conscious reflection on the way that you're leading your life so that you can amend it so this podcast this video is designed to help you help you start to do it yourself and help guide you in that direction remember Life is more than just work. Take it from someone who enjoys work, whether it be podcasts, videos, and things like this, it is really important to get reminders, and I have from people around me, that I need to ensure that there's a balance. Because as much as I enjoy my work, I also have a duty of care to the people that are around me, a duty of care to ensure everything in my life is given the correct amount of attention in a balanced way and not to have it as top heavy towards work is a really important thing to do enjoy yourself be invigorated by what you do have new hobbies have new experiences get out there in the world and start to experience things and don't just wait for holidays make your day-to-day -day life much more pleasant and much more sustainable in the long term. I hope you all enjoyed this rather different video slash podcast. I'm back again next week with a guest. But for now, I thought it was a useful little thing I'd been thinking about. Let me know what you think of the podcast. Send us a review. Give us positive reviews on Spotify. Get in the comment section on YouTube if you're watching it there. And I'll catch you all next time. Thanks for listening. Please leave a positive review and share the podcast to your circle. If you'd like to touch base with Dr. Harry Gill or inquire about mentoring, email the Dental Innovator Podcast at gmail.com.